ASH 2015 coverage continues. Thomas Baldrick joined now by Dr. Yaroslaw Marchievsky of the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks for coming by, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's talk about your work with the impact of l Trombopag on expansion of clones with somatic mutations in refractory aplastic anemia. What was the overall purpose of this work you did? Well, as you know, historically, um, the drug development in aplastic anemia has been slow. There are a couple of drugs that constitute the standard of care. Mm -hmm. And actually, in the last 30 years, we did not add any new drugs to the repertoire. The FDA approval of Promacta, that seems to be very effective in salvage setting, and now at ASH, there will be another abstract, late breaking abstract by the group from NIH showing that even in primary setting, the response rates when you add l thrombopack to standard immunosuppression are higher, of course, uh, makes us wonder uh, whether there is, uh, what would be the side effect profile in the long term and whether there will be any consequences uh, in terms of late clonal evolution. The reason this question comes up is because historically, when Neupogen was introduced, and it was, has been widely used in aplastic anemia, there was a suspicion raised by several case series that use of Neupogen in aplastic anemia causes, if you wish, uh, microepidemics of monosomy 7, this bad complication of aplastic anemia. In big randomized trial, it did not pin out that Neupogen actually has this negative impact, but clearly, at least theoretically, if you use an early acting growth factor and positive drive to stem cells, you wonder whether these stem cells, this might cause problems in terms of evolution of subclones or clones that have a potential to become malignant and give rise to myelosplastic syndrome. So theoretically, there is clearly a, a, a theoretical possibility that something like this might happen. So it is important to study now, particularly that Promacta is more and more wider used in patients with aplastic anemia. So as we sit here now, what questions have you been able to answer? What have you found? Well, I, I mean, obviously, the, the stringent question, whether or not patients with treated with Promacta will have increased rate of clonal evolution has to be answered in a clinical trial. A large number of patients will be needed. Usually evolution of, of myelosplastic syndrome in aplastic anemia occur in approximately 10% of patients over a period of 10 years. So in order to have meaningful significant results, we would have to have an observation period sufficient number of cases. But the question is, of course, whether using some of the new technologies and one can design an innovative study that would help us already to get a feel whether there is something there. Uh, in, our, in our hands, we observe a patient who progress on Promacta to a clonal disease. And you know, then we started to wonder whether using next generation sequencing, we can monitor the presence of mutant clones, which are present, by the way, in all patients at a certain rate, more, maybe 30 to 40% of cases, and whether when we treat these patients with Promacta, this clone will actually increase in size. Now, if they do, it does not necessarily mean that these patients ought to progress, but clearly it would uh, further substantiate the need of more rigorous prospective trials. So how will you proceed? Well, I, you know, our study shows that, that in these uh, expansion, subclonal expansion have been observed in a proportion of patients treating with Promacta. However, what we need now is a matching group of patients who were observed by comparable interval, time interval, who were not treated with Promacta and see in how many of them these pre-existing clones expand and those which were not detected actually reappear just simply due to passage of time. If in this additional control cohort the expansion is not uniformly seen, then it indicates that Promacta contribute to clonal expansion. And again, the conclusion does not necessarily mean 
that it causes progression to, to myelosplastic syndrome. But clearly one could hypothesize that future trial designs should incorporate clonal monitoring. So questions lead to more questions and more questions. Unfortunately, this is the reality of mm -hmm. medicine. Right. So, and it keeps us moving <laughs> and keeps us employed. Very good. Thank you for joining us, yeah, Dr. You're welcome. Appreciate it.